Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and with me, as always, is a man who's never used a light switch in his entire life. I turn them on with my mind, and I'm the Adam Glass. With us again this episode is uh, my good friend, uh, contribu- <laughs> former contributor to io9, currently blogs at, uh, what was it? Enchantment <laughs> Under sorry. the Sea. Enchantment no Under the Sea. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Is Steven that Goldmeyer. Com or is that .net? Or it's a .org. .org, uh, dot org, it, okay. dot org actually. If you look for a blog called Enchantment Under the Sea, I think it's dot the only C-A. one. .ca. Yeah. I apologize. I totally I, I, I messed that up. Enchantmentundersea.org, just so it exists in one solid bit. Stephen <laughs> Goldmeyer. Hey, thanks thank for you having for jo- me again. Yeah, it's thank you for joining us again. Yes, yeah, thank you always, for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you. Always a pleasure to have someone, but especially a pleasure to have you, Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say it's a pleasure to have not to, someone. To not have to downplay people. Not to downplay your importance, but it's great. It's great to have people around, and it's great to have you. Especially Thank great you. to have you because you, Thank you're you you're a smart guy who knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, you actually make us look bad. Yeah, oh, a no, little bad. No. And I don't want to be mean. That's the best part. You actually know anything about Nietzsche, which makes me look terrible. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, that's. Ah. Oh. Uh, after watching the most dangerous game, you certainly don't know more about Nietzsche. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. That's but okay. this week's topic, as I understand, this is not week... the most dangerous game again. No, <laughs> no. Are you sure? We are not just dis- we are not discussing the same movie twice. We're we're discussing something almost uh, uh, bleak. No, the most dangerous game wasn't actually bleak. It would have been no, bleak. It should have they, been bleak. They got, it it yeah. should have been bleak, but it wasn't. Uh, we were, the original uh, 1997 uh, Insomnia. Uh, coming out of Norway, uh, directed by Eric uh, Skolgeberg, uh, which I know I said wrong, but at least I said as a solid thing instead of interrupting myself in the middle of it to say that I knew I was saying it wrong. <laughs> Good job, Adam. You're getting better. <laughs> Starring Stellan Skarsgård uh, as and a police detective. And Al Pacino. And, no, Al Pacino is not in this one. He's in the Are remake. sure? I am sure, Pat. He is in the Christopher Nolan remake, uh, one of the first big-budget movies Christopher Nolan made. Um, and, he plays uh, Batman. No, he directed Batman. No, no. Uh, Al Pacino really... directed Batman? <laughs> yes, exactly. Al Pacino directed the original Al Pacino Batman. plays yeah. Batman in the Christopher Nolan version of Insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was very clear. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> Pat, I don't know what you watched. <laughs> but it wasn't the movie you should have watched. So, uh, this is this is Insomnia, uh, a very bleak, uh, bleak little movie um, that uh, I watched this week, and it made me sad. Man, but the... you know, it didn't bother me as much as it seemed to bother you, Adam. Like I, you mentioned to me in like your an email you sent me, like how bleak it was, and like like this is really depressing. I'm like. It, yeah, it wasn't like, like it wasn't that bad. It wasn't super I mean, depressing. It really I wasn't. Would, like when you described it, I was like, "Oh crap!" Yeah, this well, is gonna be is, like I'm gonna want to kill myself when this is done. The, the no, plot no, of the no. movie is is you know for for I'm sure most people listening have, have seen it, but the plot is basically uh, a, a dis- discredited, uh, dis- sem- somewhat disgraced Swedish cop goes to the upper northern reaches of Norway to investigate a, a, a murder. And uh, things get weird. Uh, the sun never goes down in that part of the world, so it's just light all the time. And uh, that sort of um, uh, couples the the mental lapses of this man as he's trying to investigate this crime and ends up sort of involved in the crime. And, you know, it's not the plot that makes it bleak. I think it really is a matter of it being a Norwegian film. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> the, way the way it's filmed. The way, it, the way it exists is very, well, you know. <laughs> Well, we, but the thing we, is, is that it wasn't, I didn't find it, though, that bleak. I don't know why. Like, it just yeah. seemed, it just read like any other, no. like, psychological thriller. I agree right. with that. Maybe right. I've just seen way too many, like, bad psychological thrillers where I'm, like, jaded Maybe. towards this effect. I don't know. Maybe. You yeah. were you were very jaded against uh, Silence of the Lambs as well, so. Oh, but I was right, how, and you knew you I was approach. right. <laughs> you, okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> I won that one. Yeah, Everybody in the yeah. audience knows I won that one. 
<laughs> I kicked Silence of the Lambs' ass, okay? Okay. <laughs> no one's ever allowed to like that movie ever again, thanks to me. Well, good job, Pat. You ruined it for everyone. Yep. <laughs> I think, I think in my mind, the bleak... I think this movie does a very similar thing to uh, Aronofsky's Pie, in that it, it, it gets very much into the main character's perception of reality in the way it plays. And Pi does that a little better by actually physically giving me a migraine. Oh, gosh. Pi is the worst. Um, it's almost unwatchable but, uh, that way. <laughs> yeah. But this movie... This movie, movie reaction. Yeah. This movie does very well to, to show us the effects that the insomnia is having on Jonas, our main character. Um, but I liked Jonas. it. I didn't find that bleak. Yeah. I found it interesting. Like, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I just don't read bleak anymore. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe the I read bleak, is pretty, too much bleak. Maybe I'm bleak blind. The movie is pretty <laughs> uh, pessimistic about what, yeah. what this cop can do with his power and how somebody who really knows the system can abuse it to get whatever they want. Um, but, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the I... the Norwegian police department. They have, like, four um, murders a year. Right, I, I would I would say that this would play equally well in the any American police department as well, uh, and and I think Insomnia took place in in sort of a, like a way northern I don't know Alaskan I don't know yeah I mean I'm the really... remake took place in Alaska yeah I've never yeah. Seen it, so. the, the the remake was I believe an LA cop transfer uh, going up to Alaska to investigate which in you know is, is probably what it would be like to somebody who lives in Norway or Sweden to hear like an Oslo cop going to the far reaches of northern Norway I mean it's um, yeah it's I think that uh, I'm about to say something that might be controversial I think the remake of Insomnia is aiming a lot higher and trying for a lot more interesting stuff than this film was um, this film is is uh, is is concise and it's interesting to watch and it tells a good story but the the remake really does get at this like what does power do to people and like the whole yeah. idea that the sunlight is bringing out the putting into the sunlight all of the bad things that exist in this guy's mind and even the subjective effects of insomnia on al pacino in the remake uh worked better for me but uh i you know i realize we're not here to talk about that movie so i won't spend too much time <laughs> on that but but that's just sort well, of I think, controversial opinion i think you are right i th i think um and, and pat you're at a disadvantage here having not seen it but no, i've never seen it so you know, in the last episode we talked about what what uh what was lost adapting the short story into the into the movie the most dangerous game um I think Nolan added a lot in his adaptation of this movie, and he fleshed it out. It's a half hour longer. Um, I mentioned while we're, while we were watching it that I remember feeling bored by that movie, but at the same time, you know, they added a lot. They added a lot to uh, his motivations. You know, um, when he accidentally kills his partner, it's it's seen he might have had a motive for that not being an accident. Whereas mm -hmm. in this film. In this film, we don't get that, and that that fleshes out the character more and adds more to the intrigue of the movie. And I I can definitely see that, even though I've never seen the remake, because one of the things that I found most upsetting about it was the why he covered it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like there in this one, even if you read like the Wikipedia afterwards, there's like no logical thread there. He just like covers it up because people already think he didn't do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense. He could have just been like, "No, I, I actually did kill him." I'm, you know, yeah. because the accident, the truth would have solved this problem. A um, police investigation. Now, mind you, apparently Norwegian cops don't carry guns. And he wasn't uh, supposed to have a gun. Yeah, yeah and that I understand that, thing. but there's still he wouldn't have ended up in jail. No, he I mean, would have I think maybe been fired or you... suspended, but there's no way he would have ended up in jail. So I don't know why he covers it up so bad. Since yeah. apparently, from what I can tell, he doesn't actually enjoy being a police officer anyway. <laughs> right. I mean, you could you could read it as a guy who wants to appear to be perfect, to appear to know what he's doing, and using his sort of you know sociopathic tendencies to accomplish that goal. But you do have to do a little reading to do that. You know what I mean? The movie's not explicit about this guy is a, a guy who wants to save his pristine image. He kind of he, yeah. uh, he does not seem to have sort of like a. a a narcissistic, like, I am the best kind of, I need to always appear to be the best. And he could, but I don't know if this movie actually is doing but that. But at the same time, because of the transgressions that got him into the situation he's in anyway, I right. would think that that would have already collapsed for him. That, I don't think that so, too. tendency would have already been like, oh, God, I'm a screw-up, I can't do anything right, because, exactly. you know, he's sent off to 
what I assume, I based on the implications of this movie, is kind of like the boonies. The, yeah, the boonie. Yeah, right. Like he's yeah. first he shipped off to Norway, which apparently already seems like the boonies to him, <laughs> and then he shipped off to the boonies of the boonies. Yeah. Yes. Like it seems like uh, maybe like I don't know why I just can't. The whole time I was like, why did he do that in the first like in that scene? I don't know why he decides to go with like, oh, the bad guy must have done it. Yeah. So there's yeah. no purpose. It doesn't serve an like. Even, like, the police <sighs> chief was like, oh, we should all be carrying guns. Right. Yeah. So well, and that's, that's the that's other like, thing is, at the end, when the when his sort of female partner comes to him and shows him that shell casing, like, she knows what actually went down, but then she kind of com- is complicit to the lie and says, I'll let you maintain this lie, essentially, by giving him that casing. So, you know, like... That that doesn't really to me that says if he'd just been honest, uh, everybody People would have accepted it anyway. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and so I and, do not understand. It does not make any sense. Yeah, that, yeah. and the real it's just a MacGuffin. Itself. It's just a way of getting yeah. the plot moving, having him turn. Yeah. And that's this. that's the real problem with it is that that action is what gives our villain any sort of power over him. Right. Right. Which is why that whole thing isn't solved in you know six hours instead of three days right because um, they've got the killer right this guy he yeah. he's he's basically solved the murder but the reason he can't yeah. tell anybody he's solved right. the murder is because he's embroiled himself in another murder essentially right yeah. and, and it all doesn't make sense and no. so yeah maybe we should just go with like just watch the al pacino christopher nolan version. <laughs> i will say you know, this i've never seen is, it i just like yeah well, if you if you will accept yeah. the sort of rules that this movie establishes for itself, if you will accept the MacGuffin, and you will accept that this guy is going to try and protect his own hide for what seems to be no reason, then the the, the interplay between the bad guy and and uh, and the good guy in this one, you know that that you can just enjoy that. This is an enjoyable psycho thriller of a kind, you know. Yeah. Uh, but if you want yeah. something that has something to say about the power dynamics and the motivations that people have for these different things, uh, uh, the remake might be the place to go for that. Yeah, yeah. This this doesn't get a lot into motive, and that right. it makes it it makes it a little boring because the characters. I found it. Yeah, I actually we project. Found it pretty we have to project too much. In order to make this movie yep. enjoyable, <laughs> and I know I, I certainly know Stephen is, is strongly stands against movies that make you do that, but they're uh, yeah. I mean, I generally think that you know if a movie wants you uh, to do something, it needs to do most of the work, right? Like if, yeah. Um, yeah. It, as, if it wants to be a piece of art, right, and hang in a gallery and let me do most of the work, I get that, right? But but in general, the way I approach film is that it's in it's in charge, not me. And my interpretations yeah. of it are important, but the movie is in charge of giving me the information I need to do those interpreting moves. Yeah. And that's that's a perfectly reasonable way to view the art, and how most people view the art. Right. And this uh, this isn't uh, this isn't making it. Maybe it's just because <laughs> it's yeah. Norwegian. No, Again, I mean, I would, it's because it's Norwegian. I think it might just be the weight of the Criterion label on these things that it, that makes it a little more difficult. Because as I said about the most dangerous game, and as you know, as I, I think I've said to Adam about some of the other Criterion selections he's watched and I've watched with him. Um, this is this is really just a pretty straightforward psycho psychological thriller. It's you know it's yeah, good, it's fine, it gets the job done. I don't know if it's important, uh, but it's certainly a perfectly good psychological thriller. Well, that's yeah, yeah that's well, one I mean, thing. The, I can the recognize name, the criteria name got thrown out the window as soon as we watched Solo <laughs> and Armageddon. For me, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> even, has no even for out. those though, even for those though, I can recognize the importance of the right. Armageddon. For sure, Armageddon. I think we talked about like, it like, in like, that episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I like like Stephen said, like Stephen said in that its episode, influence we, on uh, the grammar of yeah. of action movies and the way yeah. we do big yeah. action set pieces now. Yeah, that's true. this. I don't. Maybe maybe it's because I'm not familiar with what was coming out in Norway at the time, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe this this stands in stark contrast to that. And that yeah, would that could be that's yeah. fine. Well, no, I but I don't see the importance of this movie. Okay, right. now, no, it's not a question for you. It's a question I'm going to research while you guys talk. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Ebert compared this movie to Crime and Punishment, and I can't, I don't know if I, I really see that. Shoot, um, my, my theory fell apart. Dang. I'm that sorry. Was quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is as Dostoyevskian. Um, 
Yeah, Wait, Crime and Punishment. I did that wrong. Anyway, this is Russian literature, nonetheless. Um, hmm. I don't know if I love that comparison for, for to, to to Crime and Punishment. Um, well, you know what? Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I, uh, again, I think that this movie is mostly about just this guy who who. Um, you know, crime and punishment makes you think about like the value of, of another life, and you know how do you weigh that value. But in this one, nobody's making a decision whether or not to yeah. kill, right? It's it's a decision whether or not to be honest, right? I mean, that's maybe the most interesting thing about it is in this land where it's always light out. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's sort of hidden in the shadows, and does the light always being out force uh, force our our main protagonist? Uh, uh, to to bring into the light his own shortcomings, and the answer he comes up with is no. You know that you can still yeah. hide even when it's light out. It may make you crazy, but you can still hide in full daylight. And you know that's certainly crime and punishment is is more about a decision as to whether or not you can you can actually end a life. You know, and and uh, whatever. It's yeah. a little. I, I think it's a little different. Yeah. No. I, I think, yeah. I, think I definitely. I can see the theme of like light and hiding but at the same time because he lacks motivation yeah for his hiding it f- comes off as empty i totally agree yeah, with it's you it's like oh i'm yeah. gonna hide this because i can <laughs> i agree with you i really do think the the nolan version uh rescues a lot of those those missing pieces yeah yeah so the thing i was researching was is the the two things that this reminds me most of are, okay. are fargo and mm-hmm. twin peaks okay. And yeah, Twin hoping, Peaks for sure. I, I, was I got hoping, a huge Twin Peaks. Yeah, oh yeah, vibe that's the this. main one for me. But then I, a little bit of Fargo, but mainly Twin Peaks is what yeah. really keyed into me for me. So I was oh, like, yeah. okay, it's 1997. I don't really remember when Twin Peaks co- came out because I watched it much later. I was like, okay, maybe it's an influence. No way, it's 1990 and 1991. So now I'm lost. I can't figure out why this movie is important. Yeah, I mean, Twin, Twin Peaks might have influenced this movie. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely, yeah. and that's why I don't understand yeah like i don't know what this movie i i like i mean i think we try a little bit to look at what the movie's contributing and i don't there's a chance that this one's contributing nothing right because like oh, yeah well yeah it's we, always possible right we talked a little bit about this in the armageddon episode and I'm, sh- I'm sure you guys have talked about it since but the criterion collection might just be a mechanism for releasing some of these old old janice films in a way that's like accessible to people yeah. you know like films mm-hmm. that were bought up in this giant catalog by uh that, that all gets sold under the criterion name so i don't yeah. know i I but it, it it is interesting to hear you mention uh, Twin Peaks uh, because I have in my notes this whole thing reminds me a lot of Twin Peaks. Oh uh, yeah, a lot. It's it's not very as surreal. Less, but still. less pie in this movie, which is too bad. Yeah, it's damn yeah. good pie. It could, <laughs> <laughs> it could it could maybe it could maybe uh, be a little better if there were more pie in it. I think maybe. I like pie and I like things that feature pie prominently. So. Yeah. Yeah, movies yeah. That, that talk about pie a lot <laughs> are really on my top ten list. Except for that movie Pie, uh, which <laughs> which just gave me a headache, as I said. Yeah, yeah, it was the sound <clears throat> is what gave me a headache. Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was specifically designed to do question. that. Yeah, like is that buzzing noise? Oh, that buzzing. Yeah, noise. yeah, yeah. It well, hurts. I mentioned in 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 the last the last episode about something that was a really I thought a very interesting sort of camera flourish or directorial flourish and what otherwise is maybe not aiming that high uh, and in this one the little thing that I noticed is like uh, in the in the beginning there's a lot of scenes where our protagonist is having conversations with people and it'll seem like a piece of the conversation is missing or he missed a piece of the conversation or mm, something yeah um, these little glitches in time these little disconnects and um yeah you know it, in in the nolan version those are explicitly uh, part of the experience of like like falling asleep while talking to people uh you know what i yeah. mean but I, that all all that stuff seems to happen even before the insomnia sets in in this movie so i don't know if that's what well, it's i doing. got really confused about something and i kind of wondered about something um because when they arrest the boyfriend yeah, he explicitly says, "I don't understand Swedish," or like, yeah. "Swedish makes no damn sense to me," or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if the disconnects are supposed to be like them translation not issues between, yeah, the, like they're not understanding them. him and he's not understanding them. Like Unfortunately, the subtitles. Physical, 
Yeah, the subtitles made no differentiation between Norwegian and Swedish. And I think right. that there yeah, are times that's... when our protagonist is speaking Swedish and, and yes. people don't understand him because he's Well, doing... I think there's I think the general idea is that in that I think the general idea is that it's a it's a very much like a I'm trying to think of a good like a, a Switzerland French German issue where like yeah. they should be able to understand it both. And they're, yeah. they're all, f- <clears throat> he's flip-flopping back and forth, and they might be too. Again, right. we don't know. Yeah, but then we get into weird issues where they don't understand him, and he doesn't understand him, them. And th- that's part of the story that maybe we're not getting. because, right. And maybe even your Christopher Nolans are not getting, because mm-hmm. they're not Swedish or Norwegian. Right. Is that he, maybe part of the story is the fact that he is your classic, like, outsider who doesn't, can't yeah. quite mesh Doesn't with the world speak around the language. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah. least not fluently, and they don't speak his language fluently, right. and so he's always struggling just to even exist. But you barely yeah. get that sense of him that he's supposed to be like this big city, you know, highfalutin cop who's come out to the small time people, right? Like, there's a little bit of that, like you're supposed to be the best and all that. But uh, he doesn't even dress hugely, drastically differently from everybody else. You know, like yeah, he should have been wearing later hose. Whatever it is, well, I don't know about that, but no, but, no, it whatever, just something weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever's going to differentiate him from the people around him. He very much feels like he's a part of this department when he comes down there, and maybe yeah. the most like respected member of the department. But he does feel like he belongs there uh, to a certain extent, and and he shouldn't. He should feel like an outsider, yeah. and maybe the language thing would have helped with that. But you know, that's. I don't know. It, it would have. Well, I think, I think it would yeah. have enhanced things if, if he felt because well, like I figure an if you're a Norwegian watching it and he switches to Swedish, you're going to feel that yeah. feeling you're automatically. Right. Yeah. I think that's that's where around. we hit our wall here. Is that I I think probably from thinking back to the movie, he was speaking Swedish the entire time, and they're very closely intertwined languages. I I work with a Ukrainian and a Russian, and they can speak fluently, but there's there's differences in the in the language. So you have to be used to the accents. It'd be like one of us talking to someone from Scotland who's speaking right. speaking English but speaking in a, in in you know a, a very thick accent that we may not be able to understand. And because neither, we don't speak Swedish or Norwegian, and we're, we're not, not familiar with the differences between the accents, we're not getting that at all. Right. In so, retrospect, you know, every, some of those interrogation scenes would be totally fascinating if you picture it as like two people speaking English to each other and then another person speaking like, you know, Gaelic or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah, over the shoulder saying like, you killed her and you know it. And the other guy is like, well, we're just trying to figure out what happened. But then this gruff voice in another language keeps chiming in. Yeah, in I know the real probably, story. Well, I'd like to yeah. think yeah. of it more as like somebody maybe speaking, because they're intertwined languages, but they're not the same language. Yeah. So it's less like Scottish and it's more like if you imagine – I'm trying to think of a really good example. but I mean I said Gaelic. Uh, that's yeah, uh, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean it's an okay <laughs> like example. Yeah, you, yeah like it's like you can understand kind of what they're saying but yeah. you're not able to like well, that's, key that's it. That's what I mean to say. It's, it's not just the language. It's his accent in part yeah. with the language. So it's, right. it's hard. You, you could – if he were speaking just flat, you could pick up what he's saying. But because he's he's speaking in his natural tone and his natural cadence and his natural mm-hmm. voice and accent, it's it's hard for the characters to pick up on that. And I think that's yeah. that's a subtle thing. And because this is a Norwegian film, it it could be subtle because it would be assumed. Uh, whereas right. us Everybody's watching like, it, oh, I just us watching it, it's not subtle yeah. <clears throat> because we're not assuming that. So you know, and and there's instances where it's commented on, like the boyfriend says, "I don't even speak sw- in Swedish. I can't understand a thing." Um, the when he's speaking to the classroom and everyone's silent and then later he meets up with the girl who says, you know, no one in that room could understand you. I'm the only one who's, who could understand your accent. Right. Um, so yeah, we get that yeah. comments on that. So I, I think mean, he's that, probably speaking yeah. Swedish the whole time. Well, and that's why I'm just not thinking if, about like, it. Like maybe because now, now I, now I've created this universe in my head God. where like everybody who's not Norwegian or Swedish who watched this film didn't understand what it was about. <laughs> There's a chance that's true. Something. Now that I'm thinking about a chance it, that's I true. feel like I did not understand. Like that, that would change the whole film for me because then he would be overtly an outsider the whole yeah. time. Uh, you know, he'd be an alien, a stranger in a strange land, which makes it even more Twin Peaksy. 
in a yeah, really sure. weird way. Like because like now yes. he's like not he's they're saying he's welcome with their mouths, but yeah. they're not saying he's welcome with anything else. Like any mm-hmm. other you know what I mean? Like that police chief keeps going, like, I'm so glad you're here. Right. And like, oh, we're really glad you came. But like, does he really mean it? Right. There's no way to yeah. tell, yeah, because he's just this 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 Swedish mound, right? Like this impenetrable like that's the thing, is like if people can sympathize with his position, then it makes his decision to hide that he accidentally killed this other guy uh, crazier, right? So that if other right. people would be able to understand him, he should just come forward. But if he's yeah. speaking Swedish and the rest of them are speaking a different language, and then... Barely, only a few of them that can really understand him, and right. there's always the chance that they would just... They would think like, he's lying yeah. to them in his weird yeah. Swedish tone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, that, that changes, uh, that could change the whole tenor of this movie. I mean, there's a chance that, that, that there's, there's a whole layer to it that I've t- certainly missed. And it sounds like anybody who doesn't speak, speak Swedish and Norwegian might miss. It's very interesting. Yeah. I didn't think which of makes any like, of I think it makes the Christopher Nolan remake, which I've never seen mm-hmm. more interesting because they need to get those tones across more explicitly because, right. Al Pacino going to Alaska is still right. an American in America. Right, you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Where, yeah, maybe they're going to use a few funny words or a weird accent, but you're going to understand everything they say. Right. There's still the outsider in a place element, but it needs to be more explicit. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe this film is genius. <laughs> maybe. We wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. We, we've, this is not the first time this has happened. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, but there are things like, like I said before, there are things about it separate from, you know, the, the, the classic like thriller stuff that make it actually a pretty, pretty good example of the genre. One of the, uh, one of the things that I actually really loved was um, uh, the, the director liked to move the camera around on like these sort of panning paths and then would do these sort of whip pans so that he could hide cuts. And so what you'd end up with is these, like, especially in the fog scene, these really disorienting scenes where our protagonist is on, like, the left side of the scene, and then it'll rotate just a little bit, and he'll be on the right side somewhere else. And it's like there's a disguised cut somewhere there, but it's the result is to be just really disoriented in that fog. And that, I thought, was was pretty masterful, pretty cool. Uh, Yeah, and there's actually, one of the things I really liked that you were talking about the hallucinations, and again, never seen the remake, mm -hmm. but... I really liked how, like, when he's laying in the bed and, like, he's kind of, like, seeing his dead partner, yeah. how, like, his physical condition changes. Like, suddenly he'll be, like, soaking wet. And his partner will be soaking wet. And then it's, like, really, like, all over the map about, like, what's real and what's not. Like, was he out in the rain? Was he yeah. not out in the rain? Is he just yeah now hallucinating about himself and his partner? It's, I don't know. I like some of that. I like Yeah, that those. stuff is cool. Weird scenes, those weird Twin Peaksy scenes in the in the bedroom. Absolutely. I like I like I like the things in the movie where it's not necessarily clear whether or not it's a hallucination. Yeah, like like when he's driving with the girl and he starts to feel her up. Yeah, uh, yeah. The exactly. way she reacts, the way she reacts immediately, um, doesn't necessarily suggest that that happened. Right. Uh, she reacts you know, in no, two I'm, different ways in that scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not and, clear which and, one's the real one. Well, and then we yeah. get that same way with the kitten lady, the mm-hmm. hotel manager, and you get a lot of yeah. like, what is, yeah, he's just, his mind is just gone to be yeah. hot. Yeah. Right, but, uh, uh, you know, the the problem might be that there doesn't seem to be a reason uh, for, for, like, the insomnia is certainly doing it, right? The insomnia is causing him to not really tell what's real. But, like, you know, why these things? Why are these the weaknesses in it? Exactly. Um, it may well, be, do maybe it's something about like power, his... um, but the, the link between, like, sex and, and self-image and power, that might be uh, part of well, the reason why it's those know... things. They establish that he's got a thing about sex a little bit. And, like, with the whole, like, sex with a witness thing that got yeah. him sent here in the first place. So yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe, yeah. like, maybe what we're also seeing is that, like, the insomnia is making it worse, but he already has difficulty differentiating between, like, like welcomingness and not in that in that field or something right. like that, you know? Like, we, we may be dealing with the fact that, like, he may not be able, he may already be psychologically troubled in that he doesn't know when sexuality is appropriate or inappropriate or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's certainly not explicit in the movie, but it is one way of reading it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. That's I, there are a lot of ways of reading it that, that let's come up all with. study Norwegian and Swedish. Yeah, for that maybe might... mm, ten years, <laughs> and then we'll come back and we'll watch it. We'll meet back in ten years. We'll watch this again. Does Christopher Nolan speak Swedish and or Norwegian? How about Al Pacino? (laughs) For some reason, I I can't see Al Pacino speaking Swedish. No, I totally can. How awesome would that be? (laughs) I assume Hua is just Hua in every language, so yeah, well, yeah, probably. That's multilingual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we dab nothing on this film. Um, there's there's silence there. There's the drowning. That was interesting. The falling through the floorboard. See, I kind of started to wonder in my head though. Like, I think maybe you're supposed to wonder how much of it is a delusion. Yeah. Like how much? Like, because we see him like just destroying that house, right, to find that dress. Mm-hmm. Why does nobody comment on the fact that he went in there and just destroyed the house looking for the dress? Like, I found that yeah. really odd. Well, uh, I don't know. I think there's a chance no one comments it because he solved the crime, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, like, do they <laughs> have found standards the standards of justice in, Probably in, not. in Norway? Er, I mean, in Norway? Well, I mean, as the guy's already dead, though, so it's As really far as weird. we can tell, right, like, th- there was a shell casing in, the, in, in a crime scene that was not found, you know? Like, that's... Yeah. Uh, it's amateur hour. So, you know, it, it, the fact that they couldn't find a shell casing at the site of a shooting uh, maybe, <laughs> right, like maybe gives you some idea. <laughs> yeah, that, like, they don't care if a house is torn up as long as somebody's found the dress and put the story together for them. You know, and yeah. you, there, again, there's maybe another reading of this that, like, if somebody creates a story <laughs> that sounds reasonable enough, uh, everybody's willing to buy it immediately. Oh, and the person who created is... the story is the real villain, you know, or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe just... this is a commentary on this Norwegian police system. Maybe. Maybe this is also that we just things. don't understand at all. <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to tell the true story of the Norwegian police system. Right. And we just, and we turned it into a psychological thriller. It's lost on us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like not yes. at all about what we think it's about. Yeah, there are certainly a lot of different ways of interpreting this film. Um, and they're all okay. They're all supported by the record, but I don't know if any of them is uh, is innovative and, and obvious and important. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, none of them, yeah, screams like this is... This is the way, yeah. Yeah, it alters the world. Uh, mm-hmm. Like... But then it also, I wonder why it was so ripe for a American remake. Because it, it is pretty, but it is pretty bland. I think Nolan himself just really liked the movie. I think he, okay. he explicitly liked the movie. Because and, it, it uh, strikes me as bland. <laughs> I've, read, I've read interviews with him that suggest that uh, not only did he just like the movie, but he thought that remaking it with the trappings of American cinema... Um, would make it a better movie. Uh, so that's Defined what he sought to do. Yeah. The trap so he, he got Al Pacino, and Al Pacino and, and Robin Williams. <laughs> the, um, the shots of the, of the countryside are even better in the Nolan version, right? Like the, the isolation <laughs> of this community, right? No one gets this isolation yeah. across a lot better, you know, than, than, because like this yeah, one, you don't actually pick up on that much in no. this movie at all. Cause they, you they arrive at an actually. airport, right? I mean, you know, uh, it looks like a pretty normal airport. They pack up a car and they drive down the road. With the Nolan they have one, a there's hotel. these right. There's but in the Nolan one, there's these helicopter shots of just empty nothingness surrounding this town. Um, Nolan's Nolan's gets very much more into that isolation. Um, you know, yeah. Which you know, if you could make the argument, Nolan's version is is a lot is a lot more explicit and a lot less. Uh, it leaves a lot less to. To interpretation, and some would say that's a bad thing, right? Because it's the the yeah. uh, interpretation that makes a good film, and it's the subtlety of the original that makes it the better film. But honestly, I think the subtlety has led me to not really know what this film is trying to say, and and not not in a place of being able to say this film is important. It says something. Whereas the Nolan film, I think it maybe says something about what isolation and what lies and what hiding yourself can do to a person's brain. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think I would agree with that. Like, I mean, I think a lot of the uncertainty is what made the film... Not, I don't want to say uncertainty. The lack of clarity made the film less interesting for me. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Like, I did a lot of, like, hmm, this is stuff going on. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, we don't have those motivations and stuff to really carry us through. 
Mm-hmm. I think it's it's twofold because the lack of clarity in what is actually happening, uh, action wise in the movie, uh, I think adds to it and adds to our understanding of the character. But the lack of clarity in people's motivations, right, uh, Takes certainly from detracts it. from it. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you. And I think it I detracts more than the other side adds. I think that's true. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Right. This so, movie doesn't so know where to sort of the bank recommendation its Watch the Al Pacino version. <laughs> I, 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 that would be my really recommendation. I'm not the yeah. voice of I'm not the voice of this group, but uh, one third of this group would say uh, unambiguously the Al Pacino version is is I think the superior film. So. If you have to watch one Insomnia this weekend, <laughs> make it the make one sure it features from ten Al Pacino years ago, and, and not the and one from Robin twenty Williams. years ago. <laughs> yeah, or just watch Twin Peaks instead. All right, that's actually a better <laughs> recommendation. Because it still touches on the same themes of isolation and, like, secrets. and It's right. weird that, like, that these have such similar themes. Yeah. I, 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 like, I like that this plays like a noir, and it's got some very noirish uh, stylings to I it. I could have used that, more ceiling that tunnel, fans, though. That tunnel scene in particular, I think, is, oh, yeah. comes straight out of any, any noir. Uh, but, but it's a noir that takes place... In daylight, in a place all that's the time. Never ever dark. Yeah, that's never dark. Um, yeah, I agree and, with and that. obviously the obviously, obviously, as Stephen pointed out, the, the the unending sun is is you know lighting up everyone's secrets, and and that 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 is an interesting take on a noir film. I but agree again, with that. I think I think Nolan Nolan just takes that a little farther and makes it <laughs> makes it a little a little more accessible to me at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree um, with you hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nervous laughter because I have nothing else to say. Yeah, I don't Anyone think else have a lot any? more for this film. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I didn't particularly like the bad guy, Holt. Didn't strike me as being a very powerful actor for the right. character he's supposed to be portraying. Well, I think I think Stellan Skarsgård is just such a powerful actor. Yeah, I, it was yeah, weird because I was like, he's things. not. Yeah. Like, I, he didn't strike me as much of a villain. He struck me struck me as more of like, I don't know. He he seemed like a nerd somehow. Well, I know this sounds so weird, but it was like, well, he is a, a crime nerd. writer. So. He is, he is like, kind he of a nerd. Murder somebody. Well, like, he, he it explicitly by the film almost. was an accident, right? Like that. Right. Yeah. That that is the film's thing is this was definitely an accident they showed that in the yeah. opening montage so yeah I, again i this is where i would say nolan's insomnia puts al pacino next to robin williams as that guy in like a really like kind of robin williams can be when he's being serious creepy like really yes. creepy and he's creepy in in the Nolan version and it's cool. I mean this guy's fine. He gets the job done. But Robin well, he Williams doesn't come does off something. as creepy really. He just comes off as lame. Like Right, and I think he should come across as creepy. Like it, it it should be a little ambiguous as to whether or not he's glad he he's committed a murder. He does do a little bit of that talking about like you don't know what it's like until you actually kill somebody, right? But uh Robin Williams seems much more to be reveling in the fact that he's caused a death than this guy did, which makes it a lot creepier, and also makes um puts puts uh, the the protagonist and that killer on the same page to a certain extent a lot better in the Nolan version, right? Because they're both thinking about like I've caused a death, and you know, do I feel the power of having killed somebody? And I don't right, know if there's right. any of that in this in this. There's not. Version. I don't think not much because like uh, like our main character feels obviously feels like intense guilt about yeah. it. And then our our bad guy seems to feel borderline nothing. Feels maybe like he did something like it it's a good feeling, but like yeah, it doesn't Right. Their personalities I mean, don't mesh that way that like you would kind of want them to. Right. You you want this to be sort of a battle of, of psychopaths to a certain extent that make you feel icky. Yeah. Right, you want you want uh, uh, the protagonist to be sunk to the icky level of the killer. Uh, when when they say you know um, uh, that at the end when that police chief says that the killer in, in that 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 killed this girl is like the most calculating killer 
uh, that, that has ever been in Norway, right? But the actual most calculating killer in Norway is certainly this Engstrom guy, the, the protagonist, right? Because he's gone to a lot more work to try and cover up his killing than Holt yeah. did. So, you know, you it should feel icky, and I don't think it feels icky enough. And I think the whole the whole Robin Williams Al Pacino thing makes it feel a lot more icky. I think it's a lot more visceral. It feels worse. And it should feel worse. It should feel uncomfortable, you know, to see these two murderers uh, talking about their, their murders. Anyway. Yeah, I agree. I also that doesn't, agree. That's not a lot to say, but I, yeah, I agree 100% that that is... There's a there's a fundamental flaw in the chemistry between the two, yeah, our protagonists and our antagonists. So, uh, yeah, I guess I guess they're both protagonists, but they're also both antagonists. Yeah. That's something interesting for sure. But... Well, we have a, we have an anti hero and anti villain. I think. Yeah, is, there you go. Where we are. <laughs> I think that's right. Um, yeah, and an anti noir. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the daylight noir. It's, it's yeah. There's our revolution oh. right there. Not bad. Well, that's all I think. I think we're done. I, I think we're about done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting movie. Um, real quick, I don't remember how the Nolan film ends. Does it also end with uh, that character's death? Um, I thought or, so, or, but I, I don't remember offhand. I, I don't actually remember. Um, so yeah, I I'm remember just, their I'm just conversations. Trying to think. That's the thing, right? Like I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I remember the plot of the remake that well, but I just remember these conversations between Pacino and Williams that are yeah. just like really icky and vile. And you know, the thing is, I don't really remember those conversations being icky in in this version, but I do remember them yeah. being icky in the Nolan version. That's kind of the yeah. main thing I remember. So I don't remember. But how but it was. but again, are we getting into uh, would if we could understand? Right, maybe. the language natively be yeah. be understanding that as creepy maybe a little as, bit more as, icky yeah yeah, yeah maybe because we are just reading text and listening to yeah. intonation yeah. yeah I think you you might be right about that too yeah 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 but I was I was really thinking it's it's it the en- the ending to this is kind of um, ambiguous in that in that bad is still going unpunished in a way mm-hmm. um. I don't. I, I wonder if the American if the American remake makes that more finite because we usually do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We I usually, don't remember offhand. Yeah. yeah, but I can't. I can't think. I think it is interesting that this uh, the the remake actually has a very high rating on Rotten Tomatoes, ninety three percent. That sounds um, right. Which is it's a real cool which movie. Which is which is really good. Um, but also as far only one percent rating scale. Skyfall. Um, I like Skyfall, but yeah, anyway. Skyfall too. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, it's, I mean, let me let me, let me finish this way. before we start talking about any problems. With <laughs> Let's not talk about the problems with Rotten yeah. Tomatoes' uh, yeah. rating system. What I so, what I mean to what I mean to get at is that the original Insomnia is actually has a ninety seven rating huh. on Rotten Tomatoes. Hmm. Um, so we are, uh, and that's you know that's going to be a worldwide sort of you know everyone's reviews. So that's that's, and you know, and this did it won something at Con, but I can't remember what it was. Cans, um, I don't think it was any sort of best oh. picture or anything, but it was it was a critic award. So um, I'm, oh, go ahead, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, I'm reading the i the Wikipedia about the remake. So am I. It's, yeah. and, it's and real. It seems different. like he's he's <laughs> assisted in. Taking down the bad guy by the person who also found this. I'm, I'm not clear on it, but it's very different, obviously. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like, I think, Ebert compared the remake to a, a production, a new production of a classic play. Someone's different take on the same source material. Heart yeah. source material, not not actual, like, not adapting the same Yeah, we're thing. not using the same script, per se, anymore. Yeah. But we're we're using the same heart, and I, that's I, that's a pretty accurate description, I guess. But I I also think Ebert was wrong to compare this to Crime and Punishment. So you know, right? Take from that what you will. We can't and yield to him all the time. In in rereading this this Wikipedia article about the remake, it is way different than the original. I mean, it is yeah. like way different. I'd forgotten. Yeah. I only remembered these character relationships, but the plot is way yeah. different. 
Hmm. It's a very, it's a very, very different movie. So Christopher Nolan is mainly, it seems, going for more of a spiritual, yeah, remake right. rather spiritual than remake. a. I think that's right. Actual, yeah, actual remake. So right, it's using yeah. the, uh, it's it's using the uh, the the sort of main plot points, reshuffling them, and uh, yeah. And, and and remaking it into something very American. Uh, this plot, in reading it, is just very American. You know, like very much like an American action movie, an yeah. American thriller yeah. movie. So, huh, interesting. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch it again now that I've seen the original. I will have to watch it for the first time. We should do. There that. we go. We should. Cool. All and right. Thanks for listening. Podcast about that one. Yeah, of course <laughs> not. Thanks for listening once again to Lost in Criterion. Uh, it occurs to me that for the last few episodes we didn't actually name. Um, well, I guess that's the I beginning. I do in the say. intro. You do. You do. You're good at that. Thank you once again for listening to Lost in Criterion. Thank you once again, Stephen Goldmeyer, for joining us. Check yes, out his uh, his website at enchantmentundersea.org where he blogs about pop culture. And uh, it's it's pretty interesting when he actually updates it. Yeah, it's not it's Ooh, not frequent. Yeah, but uh, I'm sorry, I, I dug at you there. You quality, know what? Not quantity. You know what? <laughs> quality, not quantity. Go for it. I, yeah, that's I. I left uh, Io9 the the Gawker uh, blog uh, and and went somewhere where I could update at my leisure, only when I felt yeah. like I had something interesting to say. So yeah, and that's <laughs> that's that's a fine way to do things, and I I respect that. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. thanks so for having time, me, guys. It was an absolute yeah. pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yes, next time you. we'll be Always watching. Uh, next time we'll be watching a French film. So more reading. I'm sorry, Pat. <gasps> Black Orpheus. Black Orpheus by Marcel. I'm not going to lie to you, Adam. Uh, I don't ever read any of the subtitles. <laughs> this is why these movies well. are so confusing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good luck with this one then. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via Lost in Criterion at WithTwoBrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.